Hi guys, Ram with Lucid Man Studio, back with another video. Today we're going to be going over the Asset Browser in Blender 3.0 and above. So once you get your, uh, your Blender uh, project open, you can go ahead and access the uh, Asset Browser by going down here or wherever on your screen and going through the drop, drop down and going over to Asset Browser. And this will show you all the assets that are in your library. So objects and materials as well. And it's pretty easy to use if you click on any item and then drag and drop, drop it on any object. It's going to go ahead and change that object to that material. So it's really handy instead of having to go and find these materials all the time, you can have them stored in your Blender file, no problem. So let's uh, explore how to do this. Um, it can be a little complicated, but it's not too bad once you get the process down. So the first thing you want to do is you want to set up a place where you want to store all these assets in the individual blend files, or you could have them all in one blend file. So what I've done, if you go up to edit here and go down to preferences, you're going to have set up a folder called whatever you want. I just happen to call mine assets and it's located on my D drive. Then I just label the, um, the collection Ron's assets. So let's explore that a little bit more. So we'll go over here and we'll go up to assets. Okay, so this is my folder called assets. And in here, I have a materials folder and I have an objects folder. So obviously in my materials folder, I'm gonna have all my textures or material files. So if we go in here, you can see I have several blend files and each blend file has the specific textures according to the name. So you can see right here, this is my concrete file. This is my corrugated steel file, etc. Okay, so what do these files look like that I've created? So let's go ahead and look at the concrete spheres file. And if we go down here and click on that, you can see it's basically a bunch of spheres and each one has its own concrete specific texture on it. And then each one of these textures is assigned as an asset. So let's see how to do that now. Okay, so I've already created a default spheres file. So I'm gonna to go to that now. So this is what I use for my default, I guess you could say asset file. And basically it's just a bunch of spheres and I assign textures to those. So let's go ahead and do this. So we've got our main uh, sphere selected here. We're gonna go ahead and add a new material in the outliner. And once we do that, we're gonna go down here at the bottom and we're gonna select shader editor. All right, and we're gonna select principal BSDF. Hit control shift T find your texture that you want. Um, these particular textures I did get from polyhaven.com. They have a great uh, assortment of materials. Uh, I highly recommend it. So we're gonna select aerial grass here and I'm gonna select all four of these attributes and click on principal texture setup. And that will go ahead and add that texture to this sphere here. I'm gonna add another, another one here, hit new. And down here at the bottom, hit control shift T rocks ground so we have aerial and then we have rocks ground eight so we'll go ahead and do that and let's go ahead and name this rocks ground eight all right and in the front we're going to call this aerial aerial ground it's fine okay and now we're going to save this file so control s Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add these two materials as assets. So let's go ahead and go over to the bottom window here and we're gonna switch this over to Asset Browser. Once we're here, we're gonna go over to the outliner under Aerial Ground or next to it. We're gonna mark it as an asset. You'll see it appear right here. And now if you don't see it appear, you gotta make sure you're on all over here. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same thing with this rocky texture behind it. And we're gonna mark that as an asset as well. Now, once those two have been added, I'm gonna create a subcategory and I'm gonna call it terrains. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm gonna create another category underneath it and I'm gonna call it rock or rocky terrains. Now to go ahead and drop these into rock here, select all, drag each one into the rock category, just like this. And then once you've done that, hit Control S to save. And then now when you select terrains and rock, you should see that. So once we collapse that, select rock, you'll see those two in here. Now, 
when we open a brand new blend file, those two materials will show up in our asset browser. All right, now let's go back to our original blend file to see if these guys are showing up. And we'll go down here. And then once we're back in our original blend file, you see this little refresh arrow right here? Click on that. That'll go ahead and refresh it. And if I go down to terrains, rock, and here they are. And if I wanna go ahead and use that on this cube, select it and then drop it right on there. Of course, you can do the same thing for objects. So let's go ahead and uh, explore that as well. So let me go to my other uh, Blender file here. And I've got these three bridges and I've got them all in the same blend file. And at the top, you can see I'm naming them as bridges.blend. And it's again, it's in my assets folder under objects. So to go ahead and add these, it's pretty much the same process. We're going to click on all here and we're going to right click on each asset and we're going to mark as an asset. And we're going to do these for all three of them. Just like that. Now you'll notice that they're kind of purple in color. Uh, this is a bug in 3.0 that uh, the preview is actually just showing the normal map. And there, really that's all it is. So now that we had these three um, added, under objects, I want to create a subcategory called bridges. So we're going to do that. Once we have the bridges subcategory um, created, go back to all and then drag and drop each one of these guys into the bridges category. And to go ahead and confirm that, that it's working, I'm gonna select one of these other folders, click on bridges and it's working. Control S to save the file. Okay, now let's go back into our original blend file and we'll go down here and then we'll scroll in the asset window, asset browser window all the way to the top and you'll see the refresh, click on that. And then we should have our objects and we should have our bridges. So here's our bridges right here. And basically all you got to do now at this point is just drag the object into the scene from the asset browser. And you'll notice that the orientation is a bit off. Easy to fix. We're just going to rotate this object 90 degrees. So rotate and then so I hit R and then 90 and then hit X for the X axis. And that'll go ahead and put it in the correct orientation that we desire. So I'm not exactly sure why this does this, uh, why the orientation of the object is coming in sideways. Um, I believe it's uh, something um, to do with the orientation of the origin point of the object that we're importing. And I did test it in 3.1 and it pretty much does the same thing. So hopefully down the road, they'll address this issue. All right. Well, if you find this video helpful and um, give me a like and don't forget to subscribe, that would really help me out. And it would be cool if you wanted to head over to my Instagram page at Lucid Man Studio and giving me a like on any of my images or go ahead and uh, follow me. That'd be great. And I'll see you next time.